الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Beloved Muslims, dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله والتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون All you who believe have taqwa Remain conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And let every person look to what he sends for He, he has sent forth for the day of resurrection واتقوا الله And once again have taqwa and remain uh, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of all that you do dear brothers and sisters we are in need to contemplate ourselves and to examine the condition of our soul and to check how much preparation did we do for the hereafter? What kind of provision have we taken to that long and severe day? After, after all, it is an inevitable day that is going to come without a doubt. And make no mistake about this, that this is not a picnic day. Rather, this is a long, severe day that's called the day of reckoning, the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this day, Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum, inna zalzalata saati shay'un azim, yawma tarawnaha, تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد O mankind remain conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have taqwa of your Lord of your Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed the quick of the last hour is something that is terrible يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا The day on which you witness it تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Every nursing mother will forget all about her nursing baby her nursing infant and just think about this example that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us He has given an example of uh, of a unique 
bond of love the bond that exists between a nursing mother and a nursing infant but in spite of that strong bond Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that because of the severity of that day because of the misery of that day because of the agony of that day every nursing mother will forget all about her nursing infant and every pregnant woman will, will drop her load and you'll see people confused as if they were drunk but their confusion does not come because they were drunk uh, rather because of how dreadful the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna adab Allah azim dear brothers and sisters what have we prepared for that day what kind of provision have we taken for that day after all this is a day on which the people will forget all about each other even those who are connected with the strongest bond of love rather the person as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the person would be ready to sacrifice the dearest people to him the people who loved him the people who cherished him the people who ch uh, sheltered him in this life in order to save himself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذٍ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَأَخِيهِ وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِيهِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ كَلَّا إِنَّهَا لَظَى نَزَّاعَةً لِلشَّوَى The even doer would wish to random himself at the price of his own children of his own spouse of his own tribe whoever sheltered him and of uh, of, uh, of at the price of of whoever else lives on earth all of this just to protect his own self and save his own own self and you brothers and sisters remember and this is very noteworthy to keep uh, this is not, very noteworthy to mention that on the day of resurrection we will not only be responsible for our own selves there is an added responsibility for those who, of us who are married and have children on that day we will be responsible for ourselves plus our wives and plus our children it is our responsibility to work very hard in order to protect not only ourselves rather our wives and children from the hellfire because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu quru anfusakum wa ahlikum nara or you will believe protect yourselves and your children from the hellfire and again this is not a slap on the wrist this is the hellfire about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna a'tadna lilzalimina nara ahata bihim suradikuha wa in yastaghithu yurathu bima in kalimuhli yashwi al-wujuh bi'sa al-sharab wa sa'at murtafaqa we have prepared for the evil doers a fire the walls of which surround them from every side the dwellers of the hellfire will be surrounded by fire from every side as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained in another ayah they will have layers of fires from above them and layers of fire from beneath them so they are surrounded by fire from every side when they beg for relief when they beg for a drink they will be given a water like a like the boiling oil scalding their faces bi'sa sharab wretched is the drink and 
evil is the resting place. This is the hellfire, dear brothers, that we are commanded to protect, number one, ourselves from it, and to protect, number two, our families and our children. It is a serious matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described its punishment in the Quran for us to take heed and for us to have fear uh, that would drive us to stay within the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, describing its punishment, فَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قُطِّعَتْ لَهُمْ ثِيَابٌ مِنْ نَارٍ يُصَبُّ مِنْ فَوْقِ رُؤُوسِهِمُ الْحَمِيمِ يُصْهَرُ بِهِ مَا فِي بُطُونِهِمْ وَالْجُلُودِ وَلَهُمْ مَقَامِعُ مِنْ حَدِيدٍ كُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ غَمٍ أُعِيدُوا فِيهَا وَذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ As for the disbelievers, garments of fire will be cut out for them. Boiling water will be poured over their heads, causing all that is within their bodies as well as their skins to melt away and they will be held therein with iron grips. Every time they attempt in their anguish to come out of it, they will be forced back to it and they will be told, taste the burning power of the hellfire. Dear brothers and sisters, just think about the wish of the people of the hell. What is number one item in the wish list of the dwellers of the hellfire? It is death. وَقَالُوا يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ They cried, O Malik, the angel of the death. Let your Lord put an end to our life. And in, in order to increase their agony and punishment, the answer will come to them after years, after hundreds of years. He said that you are going to stay there forever. No end will be put for their lives. Nor its punishment will be lightened upon them. Dear brothers and sisters, it was part of the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and every prophet before him to warn us against the hellfire. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear brothers and sisters رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم was not only sent as بشير as a bearer of good news and glad tidings. Rather, in addition to this, he was a nadir, a plain warner. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, describing his mission, Inna arsalnaka bil haqqi bashiran wa nadira. Indeed, we have sent you with the truth as a bearer of good news and a warner. So our deen does not only include good news, good news, good news, and good tidings, good tidings, good tidings. Rather, it includes warning, severe warning about realities. These are realities that await us. About realities, if 
we anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, describing his mission in the hadith which was recorded by Imam Bukhari and Muslim from the narration of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu, he said, In a mathali wa mathalakum, ka mathali rajulin ata qawmahu faqala ya qawmi, inni ra'aytu al-jaysha bi'ayni wa inni ana al-nazir al-uryan, fannaja annaja annaja annaja. My example and your example is like someone who returned back to his people warning them Telling them, oh my people, oh my tribe I have seen the army by my own eyes The army that is heading towards you and intending your complete destruction I have seen it by my own eyes and I am the naked warner. This is an expression that refers to what used to take place before the time of Islam. That if a person wants to warn his tribe in a situation where they can see him but they cannot hear him that he takes off his clothes and just wave them indicating to them that this is a situation you are in a situation of extreme danger and therefore you should be alerted and you should know that there is a danger that is going to take place and be careful so this is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is describing his mission and saying فَالنَّجَاءَ النَّجَاءَ Save yourselves, save yourselves, save yourselves And here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam بِعَيْنِي He said The man, the example of the man that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given He says that I have seen the army by my own eyes which means we have to have certainty and yaqeen about these warnings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he described for us his punishment, when he described for us the hellfire, when he described for us the, the agonies that take place on the day of, of resurrection. Therefore the matter, dear brothers and sisters, is extremely serious. And therefore, whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make mention of the last hour, he used to become angry and his voice became louder and his cheeks became red as uh, Al-Imam uh, Ahmad described uh, uh, in the hadith which he has recorded from the narration of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu. He said that, كَانَ إِذَا ذَكَرَ السَّاعَةَ حَمَرَّتْ وَجْنَتَاهُ وعلى صوته واشتد غضبه صلى الله عليه وسلم and he used to say صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, as الإمام ترمذي recorded uh, that كيف أنعم كيف أنعم how can I feel joy how can I enjoy myself كيف أنعم وقد انتقم صاحب القرن القرن how can I feel joy while I know that the angel who is in charge of blowing the trumpet has already put the trumpet on in, into his, uh, his mouth, put his lips on the trumpet. Yes, he is awaiting, listening carefully for the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to blow in the, into the trumpet. When the Sahaba radiallahu anhum heard this, this felt very heavy upon them. And it feels very heavy because this is a serious situation. About which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Thakulat fi samawati wal ard, the matter of the last hour, weighs heavily in the heavens and the earth. When he saw he, how they were affected, he told them, Kulu hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wa say, Allah is sufficient for us and He is the ultimate guardian. He told them to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the best form of tawakkul, the best form of relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because people are used to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to matters of seeking sustenance 
or gaining the help needed to establish a project or something that is uh, uh, that, that that is word, uh, of the worldly matters which is something that is good because uh, we have to always re rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the best form of relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we rely on Allah concerning the matters of deen concerning da'wah concerning establishing this deen on earth concerning facing the challenges that that faces the Muslim community when they are trying and attempting to establish their, their deen on earth this is the best form of reliance because this how this is how the prophets used to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mostly in the matters of deen Nasru Dinillahi Azza wa Jal. So he taught them to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the protection for their own protection from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, all these ayat and hadith are meant to impl- to plant fear in our heart. Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a healthy and positive type of fear. Because it drives the person to stay within the bound set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ رَبِّي عَذَابَ يَوْمًا عَظِيمًا Say I fear if I am to disobey my Lord the punishment of an awesome day and it drives the person to do some righteous deeds as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing for us the condition of a person who stands in prayer through many hours of the night in, he stands in devotion out of fear from the punishment of Allah and hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so fear is important and it is one of the prerequisites of iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not be afraid of them Do not fear them But fear me if you are true believers Dear brothers and sisters This is something that is again very serious uh, And very uh, It's worthy of our, of our uh, attention and the fear of Allah is different from the fear of anyone else when you are afraid of someone you run away from him but when you come to Allah you have no way to, to go no escape no way out that's it you cannot escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the only thing that you should do when you are fearful of Allah that you run back to him you flee to him you fear him, but you flee to him. Seek his protection. Seek refuge in him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know, dear brothers and sisters, that the hellfire is something that is terrible. And we cannot ima- ignore that it was mentioned in the book of Allah and was mentioned in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and go on just uh, uh, having the good news and, and building the hope without balancing that hope with the other important uh, 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 quality that is fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Dear brothers and sisters, the one who is fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who engage in positive and constructive work for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me give you this example what if may Allah forbid a fire started rapidly spreading in this hall in this masjid what do we do and it's imagine that just there is fire flames smoke started covering this hall would we still uh, sit still or would, do, would we do something we do something we run away I will be the first to run away dear brothers and sisters now if you have your child with you would you leave him behind We don't, and I am sure that every one of us is ready to sacrifice his life 
to save his child. But we do put them in the fire. In the fire of the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do put them in a condition that could lead them to a worse fire. If we protect them from the fire of this world, we should more be more protective when it comes to, to protecting them from the hellfire. Because نَارُكُمْ هَذِهِ جُزْءٌ مِنْ سَبْعِينَ جُزْءٌ مِنْ نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ The fire of this world is nothing but one, or one part of our 70 parts of the, uh, the hell, uh, of the power and intensity of the hellfire. So, our belief requires that we protect ourselves. Do something. مَنْ خَافَ أَجْلَجْ Whoever is afraid as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is, is fearful adlaj means he, he engage in, in, in he, he, he begins his journey from the early night he does not wait he does not postpone rather he start his journey early and which means whoever is fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala roll up his sleeve and start working in order to save himself and save his children from there. We are seeing dear brothers and sisters and this is a warning for every one of us that we are losing our children. We are losing them in the public schools. We are lose, they are losing their identity. They are losing their creed. They are losing their manners. And it is my obligation and your obligation to ho join a hand together in order to protect them. It's your obligation and my obligation to join hand in order to provide for them a safe environment in order to learn the, the, their deen and the other sciences. It is my obligation and your obligation to support every effort that take place in order to educate our children in a safe environment. It's our obligation to support our schools. Our schools should be rich, should be powerful, should have all the resources that they need. We should think about, uh, about colleges, not only, not only uh, um, schools to, for, for uh, uh, elementary schools, rather we should think about high schools, colleges, universities. This is the only way that we can survive in this land. This is the only way by which we can be able to pass on the deen of Islam to the second generation. We should think about the, 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 uh, the yani five generations from now, how would our children and descendants be? Would, would they be stripped totally from their identity? Will, be, will they worshipping something? Will they worship Isa or will they worship Allah Rabbul Alameen? It's very important that we join hand and do the constructive and positive work. And again, as we don't leave our children behind, if we see that there is a fire in the hole in which they are, Rather, we go and save them. If even if this means that we lose our own uh, life, but we do it. Therefore, we have to have the certainty and the opinion that the hell fires uh, 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 torment is a lot greater and more intense uh, than the fire of this world. Dear brothers and sisters, it's enough to mention one thing about this hell fire. And that is the saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لو أن قطرة من الزقوم قطرت على أهل الأرض لأفسدت عليهم معيشهم If one droplet from the hellfire was to be dropped on the people of the earth it would ruin all their livelihood You see no vegetation, no signs for life, nothing one droplet. Now imagine the condition of the person whose only food is from that tree. Zakum is a tree in the hellfire and it is the ugliest creation. How, how imagine the condition of the person whose food is from this. Again, the purpose for us is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear of, of Allah is not something negative rather it's something positive, constructive 
drive us to do the uh, righteous and the good deeds not only on individual level because the most important level is the collective level is the communal level and this is why we should cooperate all, all together in order to build the community and protect uh, our children أقول قولي هذا وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى لا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم أقيم وصفوفكم straight in the lines come close to one another
Mm-hmm.